Max and Joe. Edge Max Joe. Edge Max, Edge, Max Joe. and Joe. YouTube live show with Edge Max and Joe. With a fight up and ready, fight up and ready to go. Edge Max, Edge Max and Joe. Edge Max Joe. Edge Max and Joe. Edge Max Joe. Edge Max, Edge, Joe. Max and Joe. YouTube live show. Was that, that Ray Charles? Ah! Uh, was that who's that? That's uh no, it's not Ray Charles. Who is that? James Charles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, uh, that, that's James Brown. James Brown. James Brown. Ah! Uh, give it to me. Ah! Uh, 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 let me hear a jelly. You know, hold it up. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dolphin's uh, good at that. Uh, uh, <laughs> guys, we got a good uh, show. Michael Kush is going to be on later today. Um, we're not today, out later soon here in the show. Um, guys, Max, how we doing, man? You're joining us from a, from a lair over there, Bruce Banner. Yeah, man, just Bruce doing, Wayne. just chilling, doing a bit of light reading over here. <laughs> Yish. Um, yeah. I made the joke before that you have like the Art of War by, uh, I forget his name, the Art of War in there, but. Oh yeah, by Stan Lee. Yeah, yeah <laughs> a lot of good reads in there. <laughs> graphic novels. You know, oh, I hate which. when people say comics. It's graphic novels, okay? Uh -huh. I'm with you. It's a huge issue in society, I think, right now. Anyway, but it's been like, what, two, three weeks? And I still don't have my Reese's, so that's kind of a downer right now. But I actually, good not. news. Good news. I have, I'm an all gray. I feel like Rocky Balboa right now. You know, like, -na -na -na. go Niners, baby. Go Niners, baby. Niner gang. Bang, bang, Niner gang. A lot of Niner gang. I can't say the real. Rocky, name. who they have a statue of in Philly, but they don't have a statue of Joe Frazier, who's a real boxer. <laughs> they have a fictional guy that decided to make a statue of for some reason. <laughs> and they have soon to be Beak Mill on there as well. Also, Mil yeah. Milladelphia. <laughs> Street. Wait a minute. Hold up. All right, guys. We're going to go into our first segment. Totally exposed. Follow him. Have a little uh, theme here. We saw a lot of facial shots here, and we kind of want to – we kind of want to go upon that. I mean, we have about three or what, – what? So we have three about facial shots here. Oh, yeah. First yeah. one, and these are all sent to us by our lovely, lovely fans. So if you want to get featured, make sure, again, you send out a system or any of our personal accounts. Again, facial one. shots. We got a girl in right back right here. Primed for the picking, as I say. Just absolutely ready to get absolutely down the line leashed here. on. Yeah, down the, down the line. line. Let's see it. Little, little, little heads up here, guys. Let's see here. Let's see. Literally here. heads up. Literally Heads up, heads, heads down. down. Yeah. Face, yeah. <laughs> and here she goes, set to the outside. And douche Ooh. in the face. Destruction. Ah. Let's watch out. In the face. In the face. No. One more time. There, there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you put your hands up on line digging. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, that's a pretty crucial part of line digging. My brother and I learned that uh, at an early age, too, because we ourselves have made the same mistake. Still do. Actually, Joe, my dad... Dad would remember when we did those beach shows, and Dad would just like be like six feet away and just be ripping the balls, lighting us up. He's like, Dish. we're like, and we couldn't get out till we get like five, like continuous yeah. ones in a row, like not like five total, but five consecutive. Yeah, yeah, consecutive. The other, the other, you, the other way to dig that ball is just angle the head up a little bit. Exactly. That way, if you're gonna wear it, you go straight up into it. Yeah, yep. Max, Max, you made a comment about about having a flat head. Oh Max. yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, this is I. It's been flattened. I think. I don't think it was naturally flat. <laughs> I think I just took so many, so many volleyballs to the face that it just. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's also with uh, with uh, blocking, though, as well. I mean, once you're blocking, you just get nailed in the absolute face. Dude, you know who's actually really good at that is Dalt. If so, it'll hit him in the face, Dude. and it'll still go down sometimes. Yeah. Dude, but he gets so mad. It's so funny when Dalt gets in the face. He's like, well, I can't yell what he says. But, <laughs> but he's so mad. He's a bleeper. He's a, he's a, not a guy that you want to upset. Dentist. Absolutely not. So we got this next one with uh, – with, Game point facials be like with the caption. So this one's going to be pretty interesting. Left back, absolutely repping it. Love the left backs out there. Love the libero's. <laughs> Make sure, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this, if you're playing left back defense, if you're on the 10 foot line, put your hands up. Put your hands put in the air. Put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air. If there's no block up, protect your face. Oh, you'll end up like this poor kid in this video. <laughs> looks getting like exposed. a corpse the way he's laying. You can see the after effect. You can already see here, yeah. You get exposed by kids that are four, or people that are four people, four years older than him. Yeah. Here we go, here we go. Left back, we're gonna see it. Serve from the back line. We see this kid number 25 and left back. Let's see how he does here. He's got a bandana, wow. I just love this kid's swag already. 
Let's see. The middle attack. He's got his there. He's got it. In the face. Oh, oh, man. Man. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, watch it again. Oh, my God. 25. I you rock. gotta respect him wearing it, though. Absolutely. I, I wrecked the bandana. And he just got gonna, right back up. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's just like lace down there, actually. Watch him just after the play. Don't watch the ball. Just look at him. Just, oh. Yeah, he's done for. He's done for. I think he crosses the orange like he's done. I love that. Yeah. I'm all about that. Uh, R.I.P. to me. That's what he said. <laughs> R.I.P. This next one is um is Ratto. Actually, let me give you a back backstory before I kind of go to the video here. Or should I pull the video here? So From LMU, yeah. So we're at LMU Lincoln Memorial, which is again, Joe asked where this was. If you yeah, point out a map of a city in the Midwest or anywhere in, in Tennessee. That's actually in considered the southeast gauge. So Midwest. No, See, I don't even good. know where I am exactly. That, that, should, that, should, that, should, that should show even more. We drove it two hours, and I'm not trying to disrespect anyone. Who drove you two flew hours. in Knoxville. Where are we flying to next? We flew in to Knoxville Airport. Yeah, I believe Knoxville, and then just like just pointed one way. And just we drove. Yeah, used through. a compass. Yeah, <laughs> a broken compass. How many um, cornfields did you drive through until you ended up, dude? On it was. Campus? It wasn't like cornfields. It was cornfields. Like, it's. It's just open, open to stuff. Just open. Appalachia, yeah. Burnt down barns and <laughs> rusty barns. I saw, yeah. like, it was like this, like, we're getting southern territory, dude. Like, southern, southern, like, Confederate flags. Like, dude, I saw, like, two or three of those yeah, on the trip over there. I see that. I know. Yeah. That's, two, that's two more than you should ever see. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no disrespect to Lincoln Memorial. Phenomenal campus. Phenomenal people. Um, you said so, you enjoy the gym, though. The, all right, so the gym. Let, let, gym. Me, let yeah. me give a recap of the gym really quick. The gym is a, is a, is a high, high-class gym. I mean, the state-of-the-art gym. They <laughs> built it about six years ago. Their, their basketball program is the highest or number two in Division Two, so they're, like, up there. And – only basketball has ever played in this gym until they got us – not got us, but they came the year before to play us, and then we came there the next year. That's how it kind of works with us. And they are funny on the trip, actually. They were like, I don't get this opportunity a lot. I'm spending all my money on this trip. Throwing it all <laughs> the line. And they all went right. hard that trip. And I respect them. I track them as opponents and off the court. But so – and they – for the first time ever – and their coach's name. You know his coach's name? Oh, it's Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. Johnny their Cash. coach is literally Great Johnny name. Cash. You can see him on the other side walking the line over there, you know, starting. Man in black. <laughs> you can't see him in here. This is our sideline. But so for the first time they ever, they had volleyball in here, a different sport other than yeah. basketball. And you're going to see at the end of the, their Lincoln Memorial, so you see at the end of the screen, they have Abraham Lincoln as their, their mascot. And you, what you can't see is Rattles on the bench because we had a sustainable lead. So we were like, okay, let's start pulling, let's start putting some other guys in. You can't see Rattle. You're going to see a ball fall on the court. And, well, let's just see what happens next here. Keep your eye on Rattle Keep on the mascot. yourself, yeah. We're out of here. That's what. <laughs> Ooh, and that's gonna be Disrespect. so embarrassing because what you can't see is there's a lot of guys. Did you say their mascot was again? Abraham Lincoln. Abe Lincoln. Rattle's gonna disrespect a former U.S. president like that. <laughs> gonna get deported out of here. <laughs> gonna get in trouble for that sort of thing. <laughs> but the the funny thing was is that you can't see. There's so many people in that crowd over there where they, like they all saw it, and there's like so many clips. Like Rattle was afraid to like post it or repost it because he's like, I don't want to like get in trouble. Or anything. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a, there was this one guy, and like they were good at high point. Like once you get like in the mid, like in the middle of nowhere, they got like that's the best thing they got going on. Like just they knew what like, they were saying. Yeah, exactly heckling us. We love that though. Max, what, what was that? What did that one guy say to you? Well, there was the one guy that was getting all riled up, and he like spazzed out with you, right? Yeah, and that yeah, same yeah. guy, when I was on the court, he was like, "Hey, you're 13. You got the thickest thighs I've ever seen." <laughs> <laughs> There's like, always that one guy, man. There's always yeah, it rhymes. Oh man, you're like, oh, thank you. I've been, I've been working uh, out geez. on those. Yeah, flexing them. Stop. <laughs> always, always. <laughs> all right, guys. This has been. Totally exposed. So if you want to get featured on the show again, send it to me, Joe, Max, or out of system account. So make sure you do that if you wanna if you wanna get exposed from us. Again, expose him. I want you guys just or just tape yourself doing stupid stuff. You know, just <laughs> yeah, go volleyball for it. related. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Do yeah, something yeah. dumb with the volleyball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it up, guys. Stay You're safe. doing great. You wear it. We're gonna make wear it. We're gonna make a, a jackass volleyball film soon. So this is this is big news here, guys. I'm just kidding. We're not gonna actually do that. But actually, if we get enough submissions, maybe we'll make like a little clip. But we'll see. We'll see. So keep submitting. You never know what's huh. happening. The future is bright. So let's bring our main guest here, or our only guest. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we're not we're not we're not that big sorry guys um, <laughs> um ladies and gentlemen micah christensen what's up micah uh i heard you kind of had to hire a babysitter for this interview so again we uh we're very, very thankful that you kind of came on for us. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm flattered to be honest. You know, if, if you feel like we're that important, I'll take anything I can get from you. Grace you know? with your presence. <laughs> hey, man, happy to be here. You know, babysitters are pretty steep in these uh, COVID days. So yeah. we'll uh, take a little reciprocation later on, <laughs> later on down the road. What do you think? Yeah. Smart man, smart man. Obviously, he's, he's clearly in Hawaii as his background shows. How's, how's the weather over there treating you right now? Well, it's been super windy, and this is a day where I can actually sit outside and you can hear me on the microphone. So we're wow. stoked to be able to, wow. to do it out here. It all worked yeah. out nice. It would, be, it would be nice. Yeah, we got to stay indoors to kind of stay warm here. So let's go into our first line of question. Let's talk about um, let's talk about international volleyball here. So you played on Morena for the last year, and how I'm not a professional athlete, but I know I've experienced playing with international players a lot within Hawaii. And we kind of want to ask you, what's your funny experiences, any experiences playing U.S. versus international uh, And athletes? specifically, somebody that's helped us out with the show, uh, Rado was wondering how it was playing with Sokolov, uh, the Bulgarian. Uh-huh. I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> Only a matter of time. I knew that. Yep. The Bulgarians run, run deep. They stick together. <laughs> um, well, I'll answer that one first. Sokolov, Setso, uh, as like he likes to be called. Mm -hmm. is an amazing person the most gigantic gentle giant you've ever seen one time one time so he's for, i would definitely say he's the best blocking opposite block blocker in the world period not blocking just opposite best blocker blocker period in the world and uh, one of the best opposite spikers period in the world and just like hands that will cover your face you shake his hand you feel like you're shaking andre the giant's hand he's got all the shots crazy big dude super nice and uh we we're we we're sitting around one night I think it was before a game or maybe an after away game I'm like that's so like you're gonna fight anybody like you're a big dude <laughs> like like how does that work in Bulgaria he goes man like I've never fought I've never punched anybody and I've had the opportunity to but I didn't because I thought I'd kill them I'm a kind and gentle compassionate human being with a heart as big as a lion <laughs> oh my gosh. He's like, I literally thought, like, I don't know if I hit super hard, like, if I'll kill him. Oh my. Because, like, terrifying. I just don't know my strength. It's so funny. <laughs> That's so funny because if, if, if I was ever in a fight, I'd grab Rat. Rat would yeah, be the first Rado guy. Be the first I would be like, yeah, yeah. like Rat would get down there. Let's handle okay, some business, good. man. Those are big dudes. Those are big dudes. Yeah. Dude. That was hilarious to me to sit there and be like, oh, you, you this is, you're not joking. Like, he didn't say that. He's like, <laughs> No, I think I might kill somebody. <laughs> like, oh, my, all right. Okay, bro. <laughs> so, so you said you talked about his blocking. It's pretty. No, I think a lot of people would agree with you uh, regarding his ability to block being the best in the world. What do you think? Does that? I mean, for sure, his hands play into that. But what do you think separates him from the rest? Uh, he's huge. He's uh, he's a big <laughs> dude. Like I think the best blockers in the world right now especially or okay wing blockers not not counting middle blockers they don't do a swing block like ever because they're so big and then they just take a jump and they see exactly where they need to be they don't need like this big runway load up to get big they just step and they just grab the ball in your face and then he sees right he sees his hands and so when I was taught throughout high school and college and just I guess American style and even in Europe and also is to just like press over immediately get over and just like suffocate the attacker. And this dude doesn't do that at all. This dude goes <laughs> like, he goes like up, you see so many photos of him just blocking like this, like almost shoulders behind his head. And then he like goes forward afterwards and he's almost like swinging at it. Cause he sees it so well that he's able to time it because his feet, he's able to time it with his feet. 
it's impressive, but it goes against everything we learn. So, so with international, it if it works, it works. Yeah. But so yeah. with international players, I've noticed that uh, I guess you could call them flamboyant, and they take a lot of stuff more personal. Like our head, our assistant coach, like if you say something, like they'll like take it personal, and, be like, <laughs> and like and like with the calls and complaints, just like oh my god, like or like talk to the ref constantly, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> I've noticed that. It, they're definitely uh, one for the antics, and, and that's something I've enjoyed, like playing short courts. Anything competitive, they're always, like, complaining to you. So, so it's always fun in that aspect. Um, let's go into a little bit of the USC aspect of, of things. So you're a USC graduate, and your freshman year, you made the national championship. And then, first of all, how is it going in a freshman year as a, the setter, the leader, and then straight into a national championship? It was nuts. Uh, I don't know if you know, you guys know who Tony Chirelli is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you've heard of him. Yeah. And so my, my thought going into that, or everybody, his, Tony Chirelli's reputation was big, bad dude on the block, super grumpy. He's going to scream at you, cuss you out during practice. Um, so I came into that year I'm like, all right, like freshman setter, here we go. Senior, <laughs> big dog on campus. <laughs> Like, just put your helmet on and get your armor on and get ready. <laughs> and he's actually – I related to him a ton. Uh, he's just, like, uber competitive. We competed on the court every day. He he immediately, like, felt that connection with me of, like, I'm not here to lose a point even in practice. Right. So we actually bonded and meshed really well. There was one time uh, when he, like, lost it against UCLA in the Galen Center, so at home. And it's like a huge game, right? And he lost it because I, I didn't set him like every ball, of course, right? Stupid me. It's come to my attention that lately I've noticed a, a general blatant disregard for our game plan. <laughs> um, it's like, give me the effing ball, like screaming at me as we go into a timeout. <laughs> oh, and I was like, I was like, all right. So I sit right next to him, <laughs> and he's not he's not a confrontational guy, and I was pissed at him. So he's sitting right here, and I sit right next to him. And he's just staring forward. And I just turn my head and I just stare at him like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just waiting. I'm like, you got anything to say, Tony? <laughs> and he just takes a breath. And my coach kind of like grabs my leg and he's like, stop it. Like, like best player. Don't piss him off. Like, don't piss him off. More. And, uh, and he's like, and he's like, nah, I trust you. You got it. And I'm like, okay. Like, we got a little bit of, we like broke a little bit through the inter exterior yeah. of like, I need to be this big tough dude and like tell me what to do or tell everybody what to do. So that was cool. Um, I don't know if that's the most conventional way to do it, but I, was you just set like, him every I don't ball. know what to do. So yeah, so, so I proceeded to set him every ball. That <laughs> <laughs> simplified things, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's fantastic. No, I mean, well, that's kind of how it went. The, the dude was insane. Uh, he carried us on his back all the way to the national championship. Um, but yeah, it was crazy. I had to like, I coming into that season, I had to fight for my spot. Um, I was told I had to fight for my spot. I did. And I won it. And then, and then we just went on this run. I think we won like 20 straight, which was like a, a record for SC Jeez. and made it to the national championship. Unfortunately, during the semis, or not during the semis, but through the semifinal game was the last game our All-American Libro could play that season oh, because so Henry Cassidy, he, after that game, he couldn't walk, like literally couldn't walk because his hips were ground, like the socket and his hip were just grinding oh, my and on his bones. And I was like, bro, like we got a national championship game, like fit out. And he was yeah. like, he couldn't walk to the training room. Like, he couldn't. Like, he needed people to carry him. What? I am so paralyzed! Said, okay, maybe, maybe you can't do it. <laughs> so we had our second, we had our second Libro play. And, yeah, and uh, we still believe we could do it. But Irvine had, had a crazy game. And, uh, yeah, I remember watching yeah, that. It happens. I remember watching that when I was pretty young, I remember. That was crazy. But, um, so we want to talk about, you said you, you accomplished a lot of things starting at a pretty young age you know, being the starter for the USA gym as a senior in college, you know, walking in, because personally, my experience, my short stint with the, the USA gyms and whatnot, like, I walk in there and like, you kind of, I just kind of like look around and I'm like, oh, wow. You know, you go from like, oh, like uh, the highest, the high for college. And then you walk in and I'm like, wow, I'm 
absolutely nobody. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> and then and then I walk in there. It's like, geez, like I mean, how'd you handle? I mean, just like going from. Could, when did they start bringing you into the national team program? It was after my sophomore year. Yeah, sophomore year. And then, like, so, when did you start, like, kind of climbing? By senior year, you were a starter. So, explain how the process was. A jun- was it junior? Yeah, or, yeah, that first summer I got into the national team gym, I had I had won the starting spot wow. uh, towards the end of it. So, basically, how it went was sophomore year, well, okay. Freshman year, we just talked about national championship, right. get to the pinnacle. And then get to the national championship. Didn't win the national championship. Yeah, um, sophomore year, yeah, yeah, I feel you. Um, <laughs> sophomore year, have an extremely terrible losing season. So I'm like, oh, man, this is real rough. And so I get a call from Spra, and he's like, um, I am considering bringing you into the national team. I am going to try out these three setters or four setters through World League. That is not you. And if I'm not completely in love and I don't find anybody that I'm sure I want to be our setter, you can come into the gym and you can try out or not try out, but like basically shag balls. Yeah. And so I came in the gym, I'm shagging ball, or he called me after World League. I'm just sitting around waiting. Called me after World League. He's like, uh, I think I'm just going to bring you in, check you out. Um, so come on in, check out the environment and, uh, so I came in and shagging balls, wiping floors, keeping score. And I had the same reaction as you, um, of Gage of like, oh man, that's Reed Pretty. Oh man, that's uh, yeah. Rich Lamborn and Clay Stanley I was in there at the time. And Rich was still playing at the time. And like, and oh, Matt Anderson and oh, like all these guys. And I'm like, okay, um, I'm just going to wipe the floors as best as I can. <laughs> and not the cleanest like, floors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cleanest floors you could ever match. And and that that particular regime, like even 2008, a couple of those guys, or a handful of those guys from 2008 were still in that gym, Rich and Lamborn, Reed Pretty. And they were like a super anal, let's say hostile environment, screaming at you all the time. If you didn't have, if you weren't standing like ready to run to wipe the towel, wipe the floor up when somebody dove, like you're getting chewed out. So like, okay, here we go. <laughs> let's do it right and uh and so i'm doing it i'm doing it and then kyle caldwell was one of the setters that was well, i think the starter guy at the time he sprained his ankle and they didn't have any other setter in at the time and i was like all right here we go like <laughs> freezing cold like doing score and I, i'm going in i'm going in i had to ask somebody to go do score and then i got to jump in the court and then i started uh winning started winning all the drops a lot um it wasn't like super pretty it wasn't like this high world class setter but it was it i think the coach and the team saw my competitive attitude and just the fact that i was doing anything to win um and then i was sitting there like stretching and i'm sitting next to rich lamborn and, and rich is like a little pit bull buff big guy (laughs) kind of a mean dude he'll let you know what he's he's uh feeling hey rich like uh is there anything that i can work on like what do you see that i can do better um any tips for me i know you've been around the game a long time and i'm just learning this level and he's like he was super caught off guard because i think he was like this freaking young buck like coming here trying to do his stuff and he thought i was i don't know what he thought of me so he was like caught off guard he's like Nah, you're doing fine. I was like, <laughs> that was huge. Like that, I don't know if he'll ever remember that, but that was huge for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's really cool. To hear Rich Lambor and be like, "Hey, you're doing all right," instead of like, "Oh, you gotta do this, 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 and this," because I was ready for the laundry list. And uh, and like that affirmation really helped me get my confidence of like, "Oh, I can, I can compete with these guys," and I'm hang- I'm holding my own. And then we train, we train. We, there's an Orsaka event at the end of the summer, which was a big one. It was a qualifier for like, for Grand Champions Cup. We win that, I'm the, I'm the starter, we win that, I get best setter and best server. That was back when I used to serve good. And, uh, and then, so that qualified us for the Grand Champions Cup, which was the top six teams in the world at the time. Italy, Russia, Iran, Japan, and it was in Japan. So I had already missed school. 
I'm going to go back to Miss Moore School, which is awesome, but also very beautiful. Yes. <laughs> and then we go to Grand Champions Cup. I'm like, all right, like, I think I can do this. Like, we're playing against Mazursky. We're playing against, um, like, Italy, the team that just knocked the USA out of the quarterfinals. Yeah, the year prior. The year before. And so we go there. We beat Italy in five. Everyone's super stoked. We go to... We got. We have to play Russia next to get on the medal stand, and I believe this was the tournament. So every year there's a tournament where it's called Operation Gold, where you can take if you're a collegiate athlete, you could take the money, the prize money, from that tournament. Jeez. So I was like, All right, guys, <laughs> show me the money. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get this Most important medal here. Let's get this podium. <laughs> Getting extra guac on Chipotle every day. <laughs> and so and so we go to Russia. We're like, all right, we got to take down the big bad giants. Olympic champions, Mazursky just dominating everybody. All fired up, getting ready for the game. Boom, boom, 3-0, we out. Like, we get absolutely trained, and trained <laughs> and rolled over. And uh, miss the money, all of that. And so that was my first taste in international volleyball. But it was a successful one, let's say, in the first summer. And then, like you said, we had senior year. Going into senior year, we had won World League that year. And, of course, that was not Operation Gold, so I couldn't take any of that money either. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hey, I'm right, I'm right there with you, kind of with the – but you get – with the USA gym, the good thing is if you're, if you're a collegiate athlete, you get reimbursed – so, I mean, so you're going mm -hmm. there, and you're just going to town. I love it, that, though. I had that chocolate coconut milk. I went to <laughs> back in the old apartments. There was, um, there was a grocery store. I don't know. I don't remember what brand it was. Ralph's or something. Oh, and it was every day. But, oh, what are you feeling? Guys, I got you. <laughs> Dave Lee. Dave Lee. Uh, he was like, he was like uh, trying to cheat the system. He's like, Mike, go to like a steakhouse every night. <laughs> like they didn't they saved 60 grand on you not you, after you won world league for us like i go to the steakhouse i'm like dave like i kind of feel terrible about that but i will <laughs> make giant grocery runs all the time yeah uh, this one this one about midnight this one <laughs> 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 yeah it's definitely uh you definitely got to utilize it especially as a college athlete but um Let's move into – so we had Mike Ma on with his girlfriend, Zana Muno, yesterday. And he was bragging about, hey, like, because we were kind of talking about his state championships. He's like, yeah, I got six. Micah's got four. The other, the other Micah's got four, right? Four sports state championships? Ma's got six state He's got six. six. And he was yeah. like, you know, I'm the best. He's that. like, he's like, I'm the best basketball player there is, you know, to come out of Hawaii. <laughs> like, bro, I've beaten Micah, like – at least 30 times one-on-one -on -one. like Hawaii's Mr. Basketball and all that like how do you feel about him talking yeah, about is that, that all talk or is that gonna back that up or what I mean unfortunately we didn't get to play against each other uh in a real setting but what I do remember is a three-on-three -three basketball game in the USA gym and I think one of the uh, Worsley brothers were a part of that I was that it was it was me Micah was it you it was no. you, Capono. You, Michael Ma'a, and Capono against no. me, Kavika Garrett. Oh, you guys Old guys. Trashed young guys. <laughs> <laughs> we got trashed. We just took the wheelchairs out and we just whooped the guys. <laughs> Get it roll! Take it roll! Rain dead! You're, like, you're like 26. How old are you, 27? 26. 26. I mean, that's what? old. What are you talking about? What? You're like in the Way prime right there. Guys. I got like two knee surgeries, ripped up back and stuff. The, uh, you guys should be dunking on us. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I got. I got the little barrel legs. I, I you, can't dunk. You brought up uh, Pono. A lot of people ask us actually on the show. They write in and ask about Capono. What you guys? So I know Capono really well because we were roommates uh, a year and we played together. So you guys, I think you guys have like two completely opposite personalities. Would you? What? What is your? Because Capono to me is very. Uh, He's, he's confrontational with. almost. <laughs> he's very like when he comes out like he he's he he'll come up and he'll tell you exactly how he feels and I I feel like you'll do the same, but you're much more easygoing about it in a way. Like there's a lot of stuff that bugs him with things. Would you agree with you that? You see, that that's super interesting because that's like the opposite of what I see Kupono as. 
Really? Like, Pono is super, super, with me, he's super, like, laid back, super calm, doesn't really ever want to, like, confront, like, uh, be a contrarian. Like, mm-hmm. he, he very much is like, really? Yeah, let's, he, let's do it. And he, so that's super interesting to hear. Because he room with him. To me, he always wanted to, like, he was always playing devil's advocate, or he's always on the opposite <laughs> side arguing with, with all well, our rooms. Joe, it's pretty fun to get you riled up, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. it's interesting, uh, you know, both of you guys, because I always felt like it's kind of almost, to me, two different personalities. Um, and we, we're, we want to do a rapid fire session. We got a bunch of questions from people that submitted on our Instagram page. But before that, we have a we have a segment that we run uh, in the intro called "Totally Exposed" of like embarrassing plays people send in, and we react to it. Is there one play specifically that you have that you can recall oh, in dude. your volleyball career? I I I might be the only person in volleyball that's made Sports Center not top ten twice. Really? Really? Well, really? You gotta find this. One was to my fault, and one was to another team's fault. But I was still on the court and on the court. First one wasn't bad. We I set. Our guy, guy, their uh, the opposing team, Grand Grand Canyon shanks it. My dude just big old like butterball setter runs into. You know how the Galen Center is lined with chairs, mm-hmm. uh, and the dude runs to like one side, dives, knocks over the chair, and there's dominoes. And there's a chick just sit, the floor wiper just sitting on the end, and she's oh, just my. watching the dominoes. And then she just goes, <laughs> wham and just whacks her. <laughs> Set point one, Lance. Tuttle nearly picked that one up, and there goes the whole row. A little while, and picked that one up. There you go, it's just one, one, nope, nope, everybody get up off that chair. Away. Oh, that's not. She just watches it. That was Sports Center non top 10, but that wasn't to my fault. The other one, you guys will know this really well BYU. BYU, oh, yeah. I mean, you've probably seen it. It's all, I still get tagged in it all the time on Instagram. It's terrible. So <laughs> I've never won at BYU. So they, it was like we went to BYU. We got to just all throw everything out, try to win no matter how we win it. We're down, I think, 0-2. Our, one of our guys is serving, our opposite serving. The dude shanks it. It's an ace. Oh, and the ace. And it hits like the speaker that is technically above the floor, so it's playable. From Christian River. But we go, if we go through the captain's meeting, you go through this speaker's playable, this speaker's not playable because it's not above the floor. And this speaker was like a foot by a foot. And it hits it. And so the thing just rockets off the guy's platform. We all turn around fired up we're like this is what we needed ace fire it up oh, we're gonna man. get this we're gonna we're gonna get the next three sets thing we're all huddled like i'm like shaking it <laughs> trying to fire him up it hits the speaker that we don't know about here's a speaker they play it and they just free ball it and we're still in our huddle and it just hits my teammate right on his heel oh it's so playable that ball was gone look at they're not even playing <laughs> And the crowd goes nuts, and we're just like, what is going on? Oh, that's rough. <laughs> and so and so, I still get tagged, because it's just like the never celebrate too early, yeah. all of that stuff. And think- nobody gets it. Nobody sees the, it hit the speaker, so we all we look like even bigger idiots. Oh, and the ace from Christian Rivera. Oh, and it's so playable. That, that ball was gone. Look at they're not even playing. That- oh, that's rough. So that was a big, uh, they, big exposure there. They recently, uh, they recently changed that rule because I swear yeah. that happened in our match and they called it out. Yeah, like, they, they did the same thing. Well, well, we, the luckily, BYU refs oh, in general. Oh, oh my god! The BYU refs. La- my senior season, <laughs> I remember watching two matches. I've never seen refs like ab- uh, have that much of an effect in a match as I had seen in that match. Like it was horrible. Some of the calls they were missing, and so oh, they, the reputation there is just BYU, BYU. There it is. We're BYU. saying it. Exclusive <laughs> yeah. breaking news right here. The Bob, refs. How to assist The refs win the most. They, 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 they so, oh, dude. It's terrible. Wait, one little anecdote, too, because I've kind of ascended to a higher point in, like, international volleyball. And, like, people, a lot of people know who I am in the volleyball community. And so they'll see that clip. And they're like, wait a minute. 
is that you? <laughs> and so they'll, I get tagged in it all the time. Like, oh my gosh, look at Micah. He was in the worst play ever. So yeah, that's a terrible little thing to have. I'm not just haters, belt. man. Just haters. Haters. haters out I'll there. take it. It's exposure. So we're gonna go. We're gonna finish off here. Rapid fire questions. Uh, most of them don't relate to volleyball, but they'll be interesting. Uh, uh, and you just give your best answer, and then we'll let you go here. Um, yeah, I'll do it as so, quick as possible. First question: biggest phobia. Heights. Heights. Okay. Uh, who would you want to play yourself in a movie and why? Ah, uh, Justin Timberlake or Jamie Foxx. Bruh. Oh, okay. Different looking people. <laughs> because Same. I think they're super. I can see it. I can see it. I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jamie Foxx and I resemble each other. I get that all the time. Um, but because they're like extremely talented in like singing, acting, dancing, just musically, like I think they just cover a lot of it. So that'd Sweet. Be cool. Favorite superhero? There's the right answer. Ooh. Iron Man. Iron Man. All right. And two more. Uh, favorite food in Italy? Uh, pasta. 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 Yeah. Like is there a specific one? Of, I don't know, man. Like the the white like we just eat so much white pasta like plain white pasta with olive oil and parmesan cheese that that's turned like because it's pre-game stuff that's turned into like my favorite pasta ever so it's called pasta in bianco and last question would you consider playing on the avp or any beach tour after you're finished up uh with your indoor career i mean i'd like to i'd we got to talk to the body and see how that that thing's working yeah but I, I'd love to. I'd love to do a little something right now. I seen, I saw on Instagram this little bounce beach profile where they talked about four man tournament. Four man. Like, I saw it. that as well. I think, I think some of the indoor guys will give a give a tough rub to those beach players on a four man. I I I have to agree with you. I mean, if you get like what, even take Taylor Sanders out there, just throwing some high balls. Tay Sander, <laughs> Tay Sander on the beach is gnarly. Nasty. I'd like to give it a shot right now if we have the time, but but six man, maybe the time not happens. Access. You're hopping in the six man this year. Six man, like Christian's hopping in. So six different. Man. Come on. <laughs> so tough. I actually, I actually have one more question before you let you off here. Um, I want to yeah. ask you about how the the filming. What is it? Uh, what was it? You guys did a bunch of F, there's a oh FIVB like yeah. uh where you were blindfolded setting into a target. How did they film all those things? Because some of those things were you actually blindfolded, like the Christian setter. United States of America. Are you ready for some extraordinary ability? Watch VNL. Be a part of the game. DNL, volleyball like never before. <laughs> yeah, I had I had a mask on. Was it like see? Could you not see through it? And how many takes was it? Well, that's that's just the magic of the biz, boy. Oh, oh, oh no the way! One magic, the one hand of the say, end. But I will say I made three out of four. And then they did they just like Photoshop the targets in. <laughs> no, 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 those targets were there. I made I made three out of four in those okay. targets. Those were all okay. like. Uh, those were there. And then what about the last one? for you guys to figure out how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but those were real balls going in through the thing. Like, it was. Respect. And I had respect. a mask on. Well, that, I, I'm not going to lie. I thought, I thought some of that was Photoshop, but it definitely proves how, how skilled you are. But, Micah, thank you so much for being on the show. I hope your family, I hope, I hope the baby is safe and everything. And, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very yeah, much. Thanks, thank you, guys. Micah. Thanks. Always a pleasure having a Hawaiian on the, sh on the show. We've had, I've noticed that we've, there's only one, been one guest who wouldn't have a Hawaii connection. Well, you look at the USA Volleyball Gym or, US, or volleyball in general in the U.S., so many people have that connection in Hawaii. Who was it? The 808. It was the National the Team Gym, everywhere you look, it's the Hawaiian connection. Uh, Catherine Plummer was the only non-Hawaiian related, related. I'm sure there's some connection. That we, if we did some more research, there has to be some connection. Go, do an Ancestry.com test or something. Figure something out. Has to be something.
My, my 30, was it my 32? So, oh, no, 30. 32 and me. 32 and no. me. That's it. It's another number. It's 33 in me, I thought. 33. 33 in me, my bad. 32 in me. <laughs> 77 in <and> yeet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, okay. but Micah brought up that p- the point about the BYU ref. Dude, right? oh, my God. I've never – they were actually not – when we were there? When we – literally, when we went there, because something had happened the week before. I remember being in the captain's meeting, and Charlie came up, and he had said something to, like, watch out for because – I'm trying to – I can't recall exactly what it was, but he said, watch out for this. It was the foot fault. Yeah. Gabby, we were watching the past oh, two weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gabby kept foot faulting, and we're like, how are they not seeing this? And so that or night, we got, two or, we got two or three calls off Gabby's foot fault. They actually did a pretty good job with us, but usually – because they knew that everyone was watching. Do you remember it was your it was your senior year? Remember that, that Stanford match? Stanford, it was – I'm trying. I, I'm trying to gonna try and recall this correctly. In the fifth, so well, at the end of the fourth set, there was a call, and then but in the fifth set, I've never seen like I was saying before. I've never seen refs have that much control over how the match ends up, because something had happened where uh, Stanford had to use up their challenge on a really bad call to overturn it. And in at that time in college volleyball, you couldn't uh, keep your challenges even if you won it. If you so they won. lost their challenge. And there was another call later on in the match, and it was a, I think it was a serve that was like a foot and a half to two feet in, yeah. super clear on the TV. No challenge, though, huh? The ref calls it out, and I think that would have gave a match point or maybe even the match, and, yeah. they, end, and they end up losing on some really bad calls. I ne- that, those matches, I've never seen refs affect That's that. That's brutal. Two, two, that things, two things to that. Rich Lamborn, who, who we talked about in the interview with Micah, is a uh, ex-Libero, USA Libero and a ex BYU athlete and he was like they, I forget where they asked him but they asked him a question about the BYU refing he's like you know what they do it like everything else in that town it's all about faith that's, that's what they do that's what, they do. That's <laughs> the what I'm gonna say about faith. that I would believe that. that I'll believe that for sure um, but that's not another thing I could never play a sport where it's like the ref dictates so much like figure skating like swimming it's like or not swimming but diving like you see yeah. like like you have to have something in your control and like okay do your routine in hope they pray it's subjective like, yeah you know what I'm saying it's like it's like I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Like, jeez. Yep. Yeah. Well, we had fun on the show. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed the show. Again, keep sending us funny stuff. Stay tuned to our YouTube and Instagram channel. Some big stuff's gonna start happening. That's all the clue I'm giving away. But before we end the show, you guys thought we forgot, didn't you? You thought we forgot. Yeah. Actually, we're gonna go to our giveaway winners. Joe and Gage, take it away. Hey everyone, Gage here. And Joe. How are we doing? Just want to thank you guys all for participating in our second out of system giveaway of our backpack. Um, Joe, you want to give me a little drum roll before I announce the winner? And the winner is Ben Ritz. Congratulations, Ben Ritz. You are the winner of the second out of system giveaway. We will be in contact soon, so watch your DMs. Again, if you didn't win, we do it every two weeks. So stay tuned for the second.